So tell me, you grew up in Venezuela. Tell me a little bit about that. I always liked to live there. I mean, I didn't even wanted to leave Venezuela, you know, and and I never thought I would become like a star. But I guess when I I think uh, what I was doing in Venezuela, I, then I think now like okay, this was coming, and so I grew uh, studying in a nuns uh, school. And okay, and. Uh, it's pretty pretty conservative now, of course, and uh, I always had a kind of problems uh, studying there. I mean, I I, I feel like I didn't like um, the school mm -hmm. uh, years. Uh, I wanted to finish really bad, but now that I remember, I had a great time. Like I, I had a, I studied with the same people since I was like two years old. Uh, still, I, gra I graduate, so they they saw also how. Like we all see each other, know how we change, mm -hmm. how we grew up, and I had pretty good memories. Like I had a lot of fun, and then uh, to see the change, I I never keep like in contact with many people from the school, but I guess they they see like what I become now, and they must be like, wow, this this is crazy, but. I feel, yeah, it was coming because uh, on the school, uh, I always like to do photography in Venezuela. So I did a few uh, le uh, courses, mm -hmm. you know, like I had some some classes uh, and I started to do photography on myself. Like I like to be the model. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how it started uh, in Venezuela. I mean, this is not like legal, no, you like they don't do, you're going to do or, mm -hmm. or these kind of things. Uh, you don't cannot even do like naked things on the street, nothing. It's not like Europe, like in Spain. Yeah. And Wait, can you shoot nudity in Venezuela or just not nudity in public? Mm, in public, yeah. I guess if yeah. you are in your house, it's okay. Like if no yeah. one knows you're doing it. I mean, <laughs> technically you can't shoot nudity in public here either, but I know Europe is a lot less Europe is different, yeah. yeah. I mean, also, yeah, like you shouldn't be doing things in front of people, uh, not bother other people, but you can be topless and different mm -hmm. things. Not like here also. Yeah, I see yeah. some places you cannot. So, yeah, in Venezuela is the same, like, uh, but and anyway, I, I started to do my my own photography. I was the model, so I started to do like nudes. Uh, I don't know. I, I like how I look uh, naked, I guess. <laughs> and. Uh, and then I started to shoot with the photographers. Um, I had a different kind of experience now, like some photographers. Then I learned like, uh, it's better to have someone who you trust uh, anyway, different stuff. So- Did you I, have some bad experiences? Yeah, photographers, uh, like some, many people say like they, many photographers are just perverts that want to take like pics and they are photographers. But yeah, <laughs> we call them we call them GWCs or guys with cameras. Ah, exactly. And they're basically like, what's the easiest way for me to get a naked chick in front of me? Call myself a photographer. Yeah, exactly. And I was so, yeah, I didn't have experience. So I got in many photographers, like, yeah, yeah. stupid experience. And uh, then I remember... Um, uh, this production and um, Watch for Beauty is the first one I start to Okay, I know who they are. With. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, yeah, Monica. Watch for Beauty. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, I think I've actually licensed some sets from them for my website. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they do this glam nudity, not like boudoir, I don't know. And uh, well, they do all some. So, <laughs> I start to work with them because they had a photographer in Venezuela. Mm hmm. And I think there's not too many options. So, I mean, I say yes, uh, like, of course, I was interested. And I started to do solos. I was also like selling my content. Uh, when I like graduate, I start to sell my content in other platforms. Uh, at that time, OnlyFans didn't exist. And I was doing good money, but then the situation in Venezuela, I think many people know that it's not the best uh, situation and every year got worse and I didn't want to leave. But at some point it was like, okay, uh, it's really uh, annoying. Like it's hard to live in here. So uh, good that I have my sister living in Tenerife and my mom too. They Everybody moved. I, I was the only one I didn't want to leave Venezuela, but <laughs> at the end I did. What were some of the like direct consequences of the political strife that like you felt? Like what were some like things that affected your life directly? Uh, oh, many things. I mean, there, there was uh, really hard years like uh, 2016, 2017, where Venezuela was uh, got really bad. Like there was not uh, 
many things like you couldn't find things uh, about food medicine and uh, nothing uh, they're still more or less uh, like the same problems about about the water the light like uh, the internet is so horrible so uh, i was working on with the internet selling things <laughs> and uh and yeah that everything was affecting me like i could i couldn't even try to do money because uh, the basic things were fucked up so and then the money doesn't uh, you cannot do too much like uh you cannot save money you cannot uh, do like big plans uh, so everything like everything so <laughs> hard in venezuela and mm -hmm. now it's got a bit better in some stuff like at least you can find everything now like mm -hmm. you don't have this situation but anyway the money is not good the internet is still horrible and uh and the way you feel not like you don't feel safe mm -hmm. like in many la latino uh american countries like uh, you don't feel safe it's not a it's an insecure place to yeah. live in yeah so yeah and also i remember i was uh i wanted to start a new life i wanted like okay i want to go new place where no one knows me and just start over again and that's what I did. So I'm happy I, I got out. Like, I didn't want to, but it was the, the best decision. Yeah. yeah. So then where'd you go from Venezuela? I went to Tenerife, Spain. Okay. Yeah, that's where I'm living since I moved from Venezuela. Yeah. Okay. And then what's what's that place like? Uh, it's an island. You know, Canary Islands is mm -hmm. close to Africa. It's, a, it's beautiful. Uh, just beach. I mean, there's not too much <laughs> to do if you are not like... A, and when you come to this kind of big cities, you know, like uh, LA or well, Madrid or like you realize, yeah, like it can be a really small place, but I like it. I like the 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 lifestyle in there, like island. That's island like, life, it's like slower <laughs> right. and it must be a kind of a big culture shock <laughs> for you to go from there to like LA or any of the other big cities, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I like the, yeah, the contrast like uh, here. I'm doing many things. I'm trying to take advantage before I go. I go back because yeah, I know there I don't have that many options and mm -hmm. stuff. So I like the contrast, but I want to be yeah. I also I want to be back. <laughs> I want my island. <laughs> Do you think that that's somewhere that you want to stay, in like Tenerife? permanently? Yeah, or here? No, in Tel Aviv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm gonna live there. I mean, uh, I'm going to be traveling a lot because again, like there's many things you can you cannot find in Tenerife yet because it's really small. But yeah, for sure, I think I'm I'm going to live there. It's so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds beautiful. beautiful. I was actually exploring shooting in the Canary Islands a while ago. Um You've been there? I have not been there, but I was like so I've shot in Prague, I've shot in Budapest. All right. Um and so I thought like you know, we I was I was exploring options for doing like a kind of tropical island like beach shoot. But you've been in Spain, no? I have not been to Spain. Oh, okay. I know. Yeah. It's actually like the one country I haven't been to that I'd really like to go to. It's nice. It's yeah. on my it's on my bucket list. I will get there eventually. Nice. I have a three year old, so I'm not traveling anytime soon. But once <laughs> she gets older, hopefully. Ah, uh, yeah, you had to Um go. but yeah, no, I've heard it's amazing out there. So you were doing solo work for a long time. Um, but then you did do a jump into boy girl, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us like how that came about and what was that experience like? And so when I moved to Tenerife, it started uh, like a, a few months after the pandemic, now the COVID and everything. And we were locking the houses. I was doing you know, all you know, that's more or less when I start with. This. And then, uh, after a few months, I received, um, uh, the proposal on Instagram, like nothing special you know they are w always searching for new girls mm -hmm. and new talent so they just asked me hey would you like to be like in the more in the uh, adult entertainment like do some boy girl scene and and i didn't thought too much about it i say yes like uh, i didn't thought it was like a big step because i was already doing like okay solo and also before in venezuela i was doing um my first videos for with my ex-boyfriend so okay yeah, no, I was... okay so you'd done boy girl before but like on your own terms yeah like, exactly yeah, really right. horrible videos but yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did something so uh, and then uh people start to know me yeah like okay this girl is doing things with guys also mm -hmm. and i i didn't feel like it was a 
big step. So I say, yeah, of course, let's do it. And but yeah, it's funny because uh, I always say like I had I've been so lucky because I didn't knew nothing. I didn't knew no one. I didn't ask like a hey, reference, nothing. But but good luck. Uh, they were really professional people. And, Vixen, no, of course, uh, they were the first to come. So it was Vixen? Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. I mean, that was really it's like, great. That's like experience. starting at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was great. <laughs> Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.